Imagine a river where salmon once thrived, where indigenous tribes fished and celebrated a natural bounty that defined their culture for millennia. Now, picture that same river choked by concrete and steel, its waters stagnant and its life force dwindling under the weight of progress. This is the story of the Klamath River, a lifeline in the American West that became a battleground between industrialization and nature, power, and tradition. For over a century, the Klamath's flow was shackled by dams, its ecosystem shattered, and its significance eroded. But today, in a remarkable turn of events, the largest dam removal project in U.S. history has brought the Klamath River back to life. The barriers that once strangled this vital waterway have been torn down, allowing it to run free and wild once more. What does this mean for the river, the communities that depend on it, and the broader fight for environmental justice? Let's find out. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The Klamath River, coursing through Oregon and California, has been a lifeline for indigenous communities, particularly the Yurok, Karuk, and Hoopa tribes, for thousands of years. The river, once teeming with salmon, was central to their culture, economy, and spiritual practices. However, the construction of four hydroelectric dams, Copco No. 1, Copco No. 2, J.C. Boyle, and Iron Gate, beginning in the early 20th century, drastically altered the river's ecosystem. These dams, while providing power and supporting agricultural expansion, came at a steep cost. The natural flow of the river was interrupted, which prevented the migration of salmon and other fish species. The once abundant salmon runs, which the indigenous tribes depended on for sustenance and cultural rituals, declined sharply. The dams also led to deteriorating water quality, including warmer temperatures and increased levels of toxic algae, further threatening aquatic life. The movement to remove the dams and restore the Klamath River has been long and arduous, spanning several decades. Indigenous tribes, environmental groups, and some local residents have been at the forefront of this battle, advocating for the river's restoration and the return of salmon populations. One of the pivotal moments in this struggle occurred in the early 2000s, when a series of fish kills along the Klamath River brought national attention to the environmental crisis. In 2002, a devastating die-off occurred, with tens of thousands of adult salmon found dead along the river's banks. The incident, linked to low water levels and poor water quality exacerbated by the dams, became a rallying point for dam removal advocates. In 2010, a major breakthrough came with the signing of the Klamath Hydroelectric Settlement Agreement. This agreement, involving the federal government, state governments, tribes, environmental groups, and Pacific Orp, the utility company that owned the dams, laid the groundwork for the removal of the dams. The agreement was a result of years of negotiations and compromises, reflecting the complex and multifaceted nature of the issue. The sheer scale of the dam removal endeavor rivals the monumental construction of the dams themselves. Never before have four dams of such magnitude been removed simultaneously, and it required meticulous planning and construction work to be done correctly among various stakeholders. The project, which cost around $450 million, was funded by a combination of federal and state resources, as well as contributions from Pacific Orp. The removal process began with the drawdown of the reservoirs behind the dams, a gradual lowering of water levels to reduce pressure and prepare for the eventual dismantling of the structures. This phase was crucial in minimizing the impact on the river's ecosystem and reducing the risk of flooding downstream. Once the reservoirs were drained, the physical removal of the dam structures commenced. This involved the use of heavy machinery to dismantle the concrete and steel components, followed by the clearing of debris. The entire process was carried out with an acute awareness of the potential environmental impacts, with measures in place to monitor water quality and sediment flow. On August 28, 2024, the last cofferdams were broken at the former Iron Gate and Copco No. 1 dam sites.
Returning the Klamath River to its natural path and marking an end to a significant construction phase in the largest river restoration project in U.S. history. The final stage of the project will focus on restoration efforts, including the replanting of native vegetation along the riverbanks and the creation of habitat for fish and wildlife. The goal was not only to restore the natural flow of the river, but also to create a sustainable and thriving ecosystem that could support the return of salmon and other species. The removal of the Klamath River dams marks a significant milestone in environmental restoration, with profound implications for the river's ecosystem. One of the most anticipated outcomes is the revival of the salmon population, which has been severely depleted over the past century. With the barriers removed, salmon can now access hundreds of miles of spawning habitat that had been cut off for decades. The restoration of salmon runs is not only crucial for the river's ecology, but also for the cultural and economic well-being of the indigenous tribes. For the Yurok, Karuk, and Hoopa tribes, salmon are more than just a source of food. They are integral to their cultural identity and traditional practices. The return of salmon to the Klamath River represents a reconnection with their ancestral lands and a renewal of cultural heritage. In addition to salmon, other species of fish and wildlife are expected to benefit from the restored river. The improved water quality, with cooler temperatures and reduced levels of toxic algae, will create a more hospitable environment for aquatic life. The restoration of habitats along the riverbanks will also support a diverse range of plant and animal species, contributing to the overall health of the ecosystem. The removal of the Klamath River dams is expected to have significant economic and social implications, particularly for the local communities that have been affected by the river's degradation. The restoration of the salmon population is anticipated to revitalize the fishing industry, which has been in decline due to the reduced fish runs. This could bring economic benefits to both indigenous and non-indigenous fishers, supporting livelihoods and local economies. Tourism is another area that stands to benefit from the river's restoration. The Klamath River, with its restored natural beauty and thriving wildlife, is likely to attract visitors interested in outdoor recreation, including fishing, kayaking, and hiking. The influx of tourists could provide a boost to local businesses, contributing to the economic revitalization of the region. However, the project has not been without controversy. Some agricultural interests, particularly those reliant on irrigation from the Klamath River, have expressed concerns about the impact of the dam removal on water availability. The region has a history of conflict between agricultural and environmental interests, and balancing the needs of different stakeholders will remain a challenge moving forward. While the completion of the Klamath River Dam Removal Project is a monumental achievement, it is not the end of the story. The full ecological recovery of the river will take time, and ongoing monitoring and management will be necessary to ensure the restoration's success. Challenges such as climate change, water management, and competing land use interests will continue to shape the future of the Klamath River and its surrounding communities. One of the immediate challenges is the management of sediment that was trapped behind the dams for decades. As the river restarts its natural flow, this sediment is being gradually released downstream, with potential impacts on water quality and aquatic habitats. Careful management and monitoring will be required to mitigate these effects and support the river's recovery. Additionally, the broader issue of water rights and allocation in the Klamath Basin remains unresolved. The region has a history of water conflicts, particularly between agricultural users and environmental interests. As the river is restored, finding a balance between these competing needs will be crucial to ensuring the long-term sustainability of the ecosystem and the communities that depend on it. As the Klamath River flows freely once again, it carries with it the promise of a brighter future for the fish, wildlife, and people who depend on it. The journey of restoration is far from over, but the completion of the dam removal project is a significant step forward signaling a new chapter in the history of the Klamath River and the broader movement for environmental justice and sustainability. 
What are your thoughts on the restoration of the Klamath River? Leave a reply in the comments section. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.